So at this point, we've completed um, our discussion, or at least the simple examples with how to extract information. We saw that we can extract the opcode from a 32-bit value by doing um, a shift right logical, and then later after that, in the next demo, we also saw how we could um, extract the RS field doing a couple of shifts, um, shifting left and then shifting right. So see the previous two discussions for those examples. One thing to point out before we move much further from shifting is that with shift right arithmetic, um, it doesn't necessarily fill with a 1 or a 0. It doesn't backfill as it shifts. Um, left or right. So given that you have a value such as this, if you do a shift right arithmetic, um, what it's going to do is look at that sign bit that's there in the, um, in the initial value. So if that sign bit is a 1, it's going to use a 1 for backfill. Um, if that sign bit is a 0, then it would use a 0 for that backfill. So shift right arithmetic looks to preserve the sign of the original value that's being shifted. So if you look at this value here, um, this is actually what negative 128. We know it's negative because of the first and the most significant bit. Um, this is negative 128 plus 8 or negative 120. When we shift it left or shift it right arithmetic, we preserve the sign bit. Um, and um, and it still remains a negative value and shifting right by one still does this um, dividing by two um, for each one shift. C will do some of that automatically for you. So take a look at um, the previous examples. Um, well, and, and in fact, here's another example that will show you how C does this. So if you want to take a, a few minutes to look at um, the link here, uh, the video doesn't necessarily show the link, but what I'll do is make sure that I show the next slide that does show the link. So if you go to pastebin.com and you go to this link, or if you go to our Google Drive and download this file, you or, or um, download this PowerPoint, you'll be able to click on this link and access this demo. When you run that demo, um, let's take maybe 45 seconds to see what the output is. Notice that this value is unsigned, this value is considered signed, the Y is signed, meaning that the, if there's a 1 there, it indicates, if there's a 1 in the most significant bit, it indicates that it's a negative number. Otherwise, if we're treating it as unsigned, we don't care, we, we're, it's not a, a value where the most significant bit tells us anything. For example, with a 32-bit instruction, that's not a signed value. It's 32 bits that represent information. So you have to know what you want to do with the numbers and how they're going to inter how you're going to interpret it when you decide if it's going to be signed or unsigned. If I run this, notice that um, when I shift it right four bits, as an unsigned value, zero. So this zero right here indicates that there were four zeros that were dropped in, right? Since each nibble each hexadecimal nibble is four bits. And if I shift it as a signed value, because the original one, uh, the original value had a one in the most significant bit, all four um, places were backfilled with ones. So C um, is smart enough to know that um, whether or not if the underlying kind of translation is a shift right arithmetic or a shift right logical. It takes care of that for you since it knows um, how you've declared it. Bitwise AND and OR. 
Um, so early on we look at some simple examples. Um, just remember the distinction between two bars versus a single bar. Um, so in Java, when you're doing OR, you're usually working with Boolean um, values that are true or false. In C, there are no Boolean values, so anything non-zero is considered true, um, and zeros are considered false. So the script that I use for an OR, it says if either the first or the second is true, then the output is true. Um, so for these two examples that we're looking at, they operate identically in that the first value is considered true. Like anything non-zero is true. Um, anything zero would be considered a false condition. And so C would output a 1 to indicate um, the result of this um, Boolean OR, but it's not bitwise. Um, other examples of what would be a true statement would be these here in C. So non-zero values are considered true. So at this lower level, um, don't forget that um, at the bitwise level, you're going to have to um, turn each of these values into a series of bits to examine what the output final answer is. If you want to implement this in MIPS, if you just simply use an OR statement, and then your register that you wish to save the result, let's say it's T0, and then the two values that you wish to OR together would be the second two. Um, more commonly, um, you'll see something like this in firmware, where we do something called, you know, sometimes it's called bit twiddling or masking. So it's a way of hiding or manipulating various bits within a word. So it means that we may want to drive specific bits to a value. And so you could do that with an OR, for example. Um, take two bits. If I want to drive that to a 1, then if I OR this with a 1, then it changes from a 1 to a 0. If I want to um, ensure that a particular bit is a 1, I OR it with a 1. Right. So by ORing bit at a bit level, I can guarantee that I've set bits to 1. If I want to drive bits to 0, then I could do um, anding. So imagine that I have a 1 and I want to drive it to a 0. So if I do an AND operation with a 0, I'm guaranteed that the result is a 0, regardless of what um, my starting point is. So I can drive specific bits to 0 by using an AND. And then finally, if I want to determine or query if a specific bit is a 1 or a 0, I can use an AND with all 1s except the bit of interest. And I'll show you that example shortly. And I probably should have a fourth one here that um, where if, it, uh, if you want to invert bits, like say if I have 0, 1, 0, um, and if I 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and if I want to invert all of those, um, I can use exclusive OR. So if I exclusive OR with just a series of 1s, whatever is a 1 becomes a 0. So for example, um, 0 exclusive OR with a 1. Um, remember an exclusive OR asks, is it true that exclusively one of them is a 1? And that would be yes. This would be a no. This would be a yes. This would be a no and a no. And if you look at these two, you'll see that the second one has all of the bits um, from the first one inverted. Masking. So 
let's take a see if I can zoom in on this. So with masking, I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in, but with masking, if I want to um, drive, let's say we want to drive certain bits 201. Um, if I just want to make sure that those two bits are set to one and don't touch the others, by doing an exclusive OR with just those two bits, um, I can guarantee that those two bits are set to one. So ORing can be used to drive bits to one. There's an OR statement that exists within MIPS as well. ANDing can be used to force bits to zero. So let's say that I have this value and I want to drive um, one single bit to zero. Then if I make everything ones except the guy that I wish to turn to a zero, then all of those values will be um, untouched and the one value that I wish to drive to a zero will be driven to a zero. So in this example the value that I want to drive to zero is that one. And so I will set my mask and then what I'm left with is that my 0, 1, 1, 0 becomes 0, 1, 0, 0. So the other three bits are untouched but the one that I wanted to turn to a zero has been converted to a zero. Um, so bitwise anding. Um, is uh, can be implemented um, in, um, in in MIPS by using the AND operation with the final result being the first register and the two registers we wish to AND together bitwise um, being uh, placed in the two subsequent positions. If I want to query a fourth bit, like if I want to know if a particular bit is set or not, what I could do is AND with all zero, a bunch of zeros except for that one bit. If the bit that I'm interested in is set to one, then the output will be a one. If the bit that I'm interested in is set to a zero, the final output would be all zeros. So you can query a status, the status of a bit by doing an AND operation with mostly all zeros but with a one in the bit of interest and that will tell you the status of the bit that you're interested in. If it's a zero the output's a zero, if it's a one the output will be a non-zero and in that particular bit you can see that that's a one. If I want to mask off a higher nibble, meaning I wish to um, maybe set everything on the left side, the left four bits to zero. If I AND with all zeros and, uh, and with four ones for the lower nibble, then I'm able to drive these four to zeros. Exclusive OR um, you can do a bitwise exclusive OR. Remember that exclusive OR asks, is it true that exclusively one of those two bits would be a 1? And um, if true, the answer is a 1. So is it true that one of these is 1? Exclusively one of these um, um, is 1? And that's not the case. So we go through this. Um, we can do a bitwise exclusive OR. So 5 bitwise exclusive ORD with a 3 um, ends up giving you a 6 and then the MIPS instruction for bitwise exclusive OR is an XOR. 
You can also use exclusive war to do bit inversion. So if I take a series of bits, um, notice that my 0, 1, 0 is going to become a 1, 0, 1, 0 after I do a bitwise exclusive war with all 1s. If I had all 1s, you can see that all of those 1s would turn to just simply all zeros. So bit reversal um, can be done with exclusive war. So that's the summary. We've seen a number of operations, the shift left, the shift right, um, shift re uh, left and shift right logicals, and then a shift right arithmetic. There is no shift left arithmetic that doesn't exist, um, where you're kind of backfilling from the right with a particular sign. So there's no shift left arithmetic. Um, so we've seen these. Um, and as well as some of the other operations that you can do at a bitwise level. In C and Java, they also exist. Um, Java, to do a shift right arithmetic, I think wants to, yeah, wants to see these three um, characters. But C is content to just take that and he'll automatically perform a shift right arithmetic based on whether or not the operand is signed or unsigned. Your reference sheet is available on the G drive and it helps you see the structure of the instructions if you um, might have a hard time remembering. Um, shift left and shift right actually take an integer value and not a register, so be aware of that. Um, but there's also a shift left logical that um, takes a value that's in a register. Um, shift left logical variable, SLLV. That one can be an important one. Um, when you don't know, you maybe you need the user to input how many bits you wish to shift um, left. And so that user has to input it, it goes into a register then, uh, once it's read in, and then you would have to use that value. So if it's not known and it's a variable, then you would have to use shift left logical variable.